And welcome everyone to our online service here at Every Nation, Melbourne North East. I'm Pastor Larry, and it's great to have you with us in our service today. Here in Melbourne, our vision is to <coughs> love God, love people, and to serve the nations. And one way we love people is through our life groups. And we have them all over the city, and this is where you get the prayer support and the encouragement in the word that we all need. And I want to encourage you, especially during times like this, we need extra encouragement and prayer. Well, one exciting thing that happened for me this week is I had opportunity to pray and minister to our uh, leaders in Nepal and Maldives. And together with our other prophets, um, we prophesied over our South Asia leaders. So this is India and and you know these places and it was just a great time together and i want to thank pastor kevin and lynette for um, inviting me to to pray um, together with the other prophets here uh, for our leaders what an awesome privilege it is uh, to do that and to minister to the nations come on even though we're, we're 
so, you know, here in Australia, we can still minister to nations. Amen. Well, for our offering verse uh, today, I wanted to read uh, Colossians 3.17. It says, And whatever you do in word and de or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever we do, we're working, we're studying, whatever we do, give thanks to God. When we give thanks to God, we're acknowledging that He's in control. We're working for Him. We're serving for Him. And we're acknowledging that He is our provider. So as we come to the Lord in giving today, let's thank Him and acknowledge that He is our provider. Father, we just thank You so much for Your provision. We thank You, Lord God, that You see our hearts. You know us. You know our situation. So now, Lord God, I just pray that You would begin to use our lives to be a blessing, to be an encouragement to others around. And whatever we do, Lord God, I pray that it would give you glory, that we acknowledge that you are in control of our life. So we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, healing for those that are, are not feeling well. Lord, I, I just pray and believe that, Lord, you're going to heal our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, before we worship the Lord today, we're going to hear a, a video from Pastor Steve Merle, our president of our ministry, who will encourage us in our time of prayer and fasting that will start in January 10 to 14. So let's hear from Pastor Steve and then we'll worship the together. Amen. As we look back on this tumultuous year, we are truly grateful for His grace that has been with us in every situation. While we have no idea what 2021 has in store for us, we know how we will start the year with a week of prayer, fasting, and consecration. I'm pleased to announce that our 2021 theme is Awesome God. Starting with our week of prayer and consecration and continuing through the whole year, we want to focus on the greatness and the goodness of God. I want you to join us January 11 through 15, 2021, as we consecrate ourselves and seek God and know more about our awesome God. Good morning, good morning, church. Welcome to our online service. Uh, I messaged a bunch of you earlier this week and I said that I was really feeling that God wanted us to sing about how He has the victory and how He's still King on the throne. And I guess now we know why. Um, so wherever you are right now, maybe you're lying down in bed, maybe you're sitting on a couch. I want to encourage you, let's stand up. Let's get some energy this morning uh, and let's worship our King of Kings because He is still King. He is ruler of everything. What He says will prevail and He has a plan and purpose still amongst everything. So maybe you're singing this morning and you don't believe the words you're singing. Let them be a reminder to you this morning that He is still King. And, uh, and, and remind yourself of it and remind yourself that He is still good, He is still faithful, He is still powerful. Uh, and so we can just praise Him and praise Him and praise Him. So let's, I want to encourage you, let's do that this morning, right? Let's pray. Father God, we thank You, God. We thank You that no matter where we are right now, God, that we can worship You, Father, that we can lift our voice as one, connected around Melbourne, Father. And we thank you, Father God. We're going to praise you this morning, Lord God. We're going to give you our best worship this morning, Father God. We're going to give you our energy, our voices, Lord. And you deserve everything, God. You deserve more than we could ever give or provide, Father. And we just thank you. And we want to lift your name high, Father. Across Melbourne right now, maybe we're listening from overseas, wherever, God, wherever we are, Father, we want your name to ring high. And we love you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Come on. Amen. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasure is the faith.
continuing our series that we have called spiritual warfare taking back what is spiritually ours taking back our inheritance the reason why Jesus came was to destroy the works of the evil one and as the people of God God has called us to a life of complete victory and so we need to learn how to fight this battle so that we can win back our inheritance that God has blessed us with well this series has been based on this verse of scripture in Ephesians 6, um, verse 12. And it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. And so our battle is not against people, your enemies, your bullies at school. No, our battle is against principalities and powers in heavenly places. We've seen that uh, Daniel you know, uh, prayed 21 days, and it says uh, Michael, the, the angel, was uh, fighting the principalities of Persia for 21 days before he can get the answer. And we know that there are principal <laughs> principalities and powers over different cities, different nations. And so, thank God, even here in Melbourne, um, as the leaders and people of God rally together to pray. Uh, the pandemic bill did not get passed. And, and so um, we're just so thankful, so thankful for that. And we are continually believing for breakthroughs 
for Melbourne. Come on, can I hear an amen? And we're believing for a mighty revival in this land. Let's keep praying. Well, it continues in verse 11 and 13 or 14. It says, Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you'll be able to, to withstand in the evil day and having done all, stand firm. So we do know that the enemy is a schemer. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He's a tempter. He's the accuser of the brethren. And so he will whisper these lies and tell us we're not good enough and we don't know enough and all these things to try to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. He will tempt us at our weakest moments. And it could be when you're hungry, when you're lonely, when you're angry, or just when you're weary. He just attacks that way. He's such a schemer. He's just out to steal, kill, and destroy. He, we got to know. The enemy hates our lives. The moment we became a Christian, the enemy hates us and has been trying to destroy us. And so that's why it's so important that we realize that we're in a battle and we need to put on our armor. And it continues in verse 14 and, and 15. It says, Stand for, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And so we talked about the different <clears throat> parts of the armor that we are to put on. The belt of truth, we talked about that last week. And we talked about the gospel shoes of peace. But we also talked about the breastplate of righteousness that covers, protects our, our heart. And then it continues on in verse 16 and 17. It says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So today we're going to look at these two uh, parts, the shield and the sword. And so I'm calling this message faith and the word. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your anointing on your word. Anoint our ears to hear and our hearts to receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I really love um, these two pieces of armor that we're going to focus on today. Uh, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Um, these two pieces of armor has really helped me as a Christian and to grow in my faith. And so I really want to focus on this. And it's interesting that when we read Ephesians 6, uh, verse uh, 16, it says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? In all circumstances, and basically in everything that we're doing, we're taking up the shield of faith. We all know that we receive Christ by faith. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's, it's the gift of God. And so we receive him by faith we get baptized in faith we speak out in our new heavenly language in faith everything that we do as a christian is by faith and we need to walk in in that understanding every day it's interesting because paul is giving reference to uh, the roman soldier and how um, they use the shield and the shield was, was quite interesting because it protected them from these fl flaming arrows. And, you know, when they put their shields together, the arrows couldn't hit them. In the same way is that we need to put up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. What's a fiery dart? It could be those words of accusation, those um, lies the enemy tries to tell you that you're not good you're not good enough you don't know enough all these things that he tries to throw at you and it, once it he throws at you and it hits you that'll stop you from doing anything for God and so it was interesting that um, this past week in our leadership 215 class uh, Edward shared about the armor of God and he mentioned in our, in our notes this statement. 
Our faith, like Roman shields, must have three qualities. Large enough, light enough, and linked enough. And I thought it was so good, I needed to mention it here. And the first one is large enough to cover the person, the family, and ministry. You think about the Roman soldiers um, when they would um, uh, go to battle and they would link their shields together. Uh, no arrow could penetrate them. But in the same way, our faith needs to be large enough to cover our family. I, I like the way Job, you know, he says that he would make sacrifices and pray to God for his family every day. And, you know, that's, that's the whole idea for us as believers is that we should be praying for our family. We should live a life of faith for our family. Yeah. It reminded me of my father that was um, received the Lord at 14 years old. And he was such a, um, a strong believer at that age that um, his parents threatened to kick him out of the house and, and um, to, to give up being a Christian. And he said he wouldn't do that. They can kick him out if he wants to, but he won't do that. And so um, eventually his brothers, he led his brothers to the Lord. Two years later, he led his parents to the Lord. He led my great grandma and grandpa to the Lord. He, you know, we saw family revival. And this was from a 14 year old's faith. I want to encourage all of us that we need to have faith like that. Faith that is large enough to cover and to influence our family members. In Hebrews 11.6, it says, And without faith, it's impossible to please him. Whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So by faith, we believe in God that we can't see. By faith, we live out every day. We serve him by faith. Everything we do, as I said, is by faith. And as we walk this walk by faith, we trust that he will reward us according to his word. In Deuteronomy um, 6, 5, and 7, it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. You shall teach them di diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. So this is the word of encouragement for parents to teach their children the Word of God. That's our responsibility as parents. We should be instilling our faith to our children. What we believe, um, how we should live, how we should behave. And the stronger our faith, the stronger our children's faith will be as well. I'm reminded, I was reminded of my my son, when he preached his first message in, in our Tokyo church, and he called it the five setbacks in life. And as he was sharing about how he was bullied in school, how he was um, almost flunked in, in, in school, and, and he was uh, <coughs> um, homeschooled, he um, was put in the, the batch the army batch that was kind of like all gangsters. So he had all these setbacks, but he said that what kept him going was he remembered uh, the prayers that we prayed together with him and the faith stories that we, we shared with him. And as he reflected and remembered the faith stories that that I shared with him and my dad shared with him, that it kept him going through those difficult seasons. You see, we need to share our faith stories, uh, the stories that God is able. He answers prayers. He heals us. He delivers us. Uh, the Lord provided for us when we didn't even have food in the shelves. 
the Lord provided lobster crabs and fish for us. And it was a supernatural experience uh, for me that I would share with my kids. And they still remember that to this day. The next thing is that um, the, the shield needs to be light enough to give us confidence to charge the enemy. You know, if the shield is too heavy <clears throat> you, and it, you're only using it for defense, then you're, you're never going to charge and move forward. Um, sometimes we act like that as Christians. Rather than having a forward-moving faith, we have a defense moving faith or not really moving. We're just backpedaling. And we think, well, somebody else can step out. Somebody else can serve. Somebody else can pray. Somebody else can testify. But not me. I just want to be a quiet Christian. No, God has called all of us to fight this good fight. And I like what it says in, in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. It says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Of course, if you're a woman, act like a woman, okay? But um, this is an encouragement uh, really to be the people of God that God's called us to be. Stand firm in the faith. Act like the person that God has called you to be. And be strong. Be strong. And so as we are we're going to keep moving forward in the things that God has for us to do. And Paul says this to Timothy, his spiritual son, in 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you've been <coughs> called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So Paul's encouraging him, come on, Timothy, fight. Fight this good fight of faith. God is with us and God is for us. See, as a Christian, you're, you're not called to sit back and do nothing. We are called to move forward. We are called to serve. We are called to go and make disciples. And God has given all of us gifts to be used to be a blessing and encouragement to others. And so as we understand that God has given us all these, these blessings, we need to learn how to step out in faith. You see, the only way that your faith grows is when you step out in faith and serve, pray, testify, use the gifts that God's given you. The more you do that, the more your faith grows and you grow closer to the Lord. And uh, I like in Hebrews uh, 10, uh, 35 and 39, 38 to 39, it says, therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed, but we are those that have faith and persevere their deed, their souls. Pre preserve their souls. Sorry about that. And so, um, basically, the encouragement here is that don't throw away our confidence. Our confidence is not in ourselves, our abilities, but it's in the Lord. And so, we should not shrink back. We should not move backwards, but we're always going forward. And so if we know that our confidence is in the Lord, as we step out, the Lord will continue to multiply the faith upon our hearts and the giftings, and many people will be blessed. In um, 2 Timothy 4, 5, and 7, As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. So Paul is encouraging Timothy again, and he's saying, endure suffering, work and do the work of an evangelist, and fight the good fight of faith. So this is such an encouragement for us as we take up that shield of faith. Remember, in all circumstances, 
we take up the shield of faith. And so that's such a reminder in everything that we do, we do it in faith and to give God glory. The third thing is that uh, we're linked enough with the faith of other believers for protection. And the Romans soldiers that they would put the shield and it would look like a turtle shell and there was nothing that could really penetrate when they do did that and so this is the whole idea of linking up um, with others the Roman soldiers they don't fight alone you fight together and in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 12, through 12, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If, for if, one, if either of them falls, the one will fill up his companion. One will lift, his, lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. And if one overpowers him, who is alone, two can re resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. So this is such an encouragement for us that we need to be linked together with others. Many times uh, you'll see this being read in, in weddings. And speaking of weddings, I want to congratulate um, Ken and Carla on their wedding that happened last Sunday. And so we congratulate them on their union together. And so God joins us together with other brothers and sisters so that um, we can get, um, our faith can grow and we can get the, that prayer support that we need. That's why it says in Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, so let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is a habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so the encouragement here is that we need fellowship. The more we come together with other believers, our faith will grow. And that's how we build our faith. We build it through others. We build it in our lives by reading the word, stepping out. And, and we build it by just um, um, believing and, and, and praying for others. And I was just thinking of you know, just how my faith has grown over the years. It's basically every time I've stepped out in faith, I've seen God come through. He answered the prayer. Um, he came through, supplied the, the finance for a building we're believing for. Um, he, we prayed for people. We saw them being healed. So the Lord has answered along the way. And so that's how our faith has grown. So in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. And, you know, if we have faith-filled brothers and sisters standing next to us, encouraging us, praying for us, it doesn't matter what the enemy is throwing at us. Um, we know that we have brothers and sisters that believe in us and pray for us. You know, that's so encouraging. The next thing we want to highlight is the word or the sword of the spirit. And this is taken from verse 17. And it says, and the sword of the spirit or take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And when you look at the Roman soldier, they would have two swords. They have a longer sword and then they have this shorter sword that was double edged and it was pointed and this was meant for uh, thrusting so you know they would put their shields together and thrust thrust and this is significant for us 
Because look at what it says here in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division and the soul of the spirit of joints and marrow, and the discerning of thoughts and intentions of the heart. When we use the word of God, it's like a sword that pierces through to the soul. Have you ever declared the word of the Lord over someone? Um, God is with you. God is for you. And if he's for you, who can be against you? And you make declarations like that. Then it's like piercing the heart of the person. And, um, you know, you can't deny that, that God is, is speaking and encouraging people. I like in Psalm 23, 4, it says, And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. The rod and staff for the shepherd was one that brings protection, the rod, and the staff is one that guides the sheep back. That's the word of God for us. It guides us back, but it also protects us. So even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're not going to be afraid because God's word is the rod and staff that will protect us and guide us back. So we need the word of God in our life, especially in times like we're living right now. You know, God could have said anything to Joshua when he took over from Moses, but he said this. And Joshua 1 8, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. God was telling Joshua, in order to have success in life, you need to follow and obey the Word of God. See, the Word of God is so key and vital. To our Christian walk. As we're going through the armor of God, this is the only piece of the armor that is offensive, offensive, and it's used to attack. How do we attack against the schemes of the enemy? We use the Word of God, right? That's what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4. When Satan came to try to tempt him, and he says, uh, turn these stones into bread, Jesus says, as the word says, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Jesus used the word every time the enemy attacked him. That's how we need to, to be as believers. We need to use the word of God, speak the word of God, declare the word of God, prophesy the word of God. But I want to encourage us, there is something about declaring the word of God over our situations. This thought is from Ezekiel 37, 4 through 5. He says, Then he said to me, Prophesy over to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones, I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. So the Lord was speaking to Ezekiel to prophesy over dry bones come to life. And as Ezekiel prophesied and declared the word of the Lord, life came back into these bones. In the same way, I believe as we declare the word of the Lord over our situations, life will come back into our situation. I've seen that happen um, for many people. Uh, prayed for this one guy that was battling with depression. I just began to just declare the word of the Lord. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I just began to declare the word of the Lord until his face lifted up. And I said, you are a mighty man of valor. Don't let the enemy lie to you and put you down. And finally, by the time he left my office, his, 
his face was lifted up and and he kind of got the joy back and he could smile again and it was just you know a matter of a, a week later he got he got a job and when we declare the word of the Lord I've seen it even in deliverance ministry as we declare the word of the Lord to set the, the captives free those that are demon possessed they are free in Jesus name and so declaring the word of the Lord is so key and important Paul tells Timothy this in 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. So people will only have, they will have itching ears, you know, only hear what they want to hear. So Paul is telling Timothy, preach the word, rebuke, reprove, exhort. See, the word of God does that. We don't even have to. Um, explain it uh, the word of God as we speak the word of God it pierces it rebukes it corrects and so that's the power of the word of God like that sword that just hits in the soul of the person and they realize man I need to change and that happened several times for me after I preached the word people come up to me and said pastor you know um, he read this verse and it spoke to me. I think I need to change you know, my ways and what I'm doing and how I'm living. And I'm saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because it's the word that goes forth and the Holy Spirit's convicting the person. Hosea 4.6, it says, My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I have rejected you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children. And so the enemy will try to keep us in the dark. He doesn't want us to know the word of God. He doesn't want us to know that we have an inheritance with God and we can claim com complete victory. So he will lie to us and say, uh, you're always going to live this, be this way and you're always going to have this sickness and you're always going to have this this discouraging or depression that you're going to battle. No, we don't have to listen to the lies of the enemy. We The people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. The more we learn the word of God, apply the word of God in our life, in our situations, we're going to get complete victory. And so, as we conclude today faith and the word I want to encourage us let's fight in faith and declare God's promises when we do this we are going to remember in all circumstances take up that shield of faith fight the good fight of faith God is calling us to a battle to fight in faith and declare the promises of God with the Word of God. Declare it. Speak it. Believe it. Live it. As we do, we're going to see breakthrough. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for your people. I thank you, Lord God, how you're encouraging us to fight the good fight of faith. You have not called us to a battle to lose. You have called us to the battle to win. So I thank you, Lord God, that you are helping to instruct us today how to win in this battle. And as we take up the Word of God, read it, meditate on it, live it out, apply it to our lives, we're going to use it like that dagger, that sword that's going to pierce even the darkness that's around us, our schools, our workplaces. We're going to declare the word of the Lord. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost.
And we can declare the word of the Lord, and even in our homes. We can declare righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We can declare your presence in our homes. We can declare, Lord God, Father, just uh, joy and love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and and self-control. God, I just thank you, Father, that you're encouraging us today that as we declare the word of the Lord, we're going to even begin to see breakthroughs even in our own city. For Melbourne, Lord God, I just thank you that we're going to begin to see just a breakthrough in this, in this land that, Lord, righteousness exalts a nation. So I thank you, Lord God, that you have a plan and purpose for the city. And we declare righteousness to reign in this city. We just pray, Lord God, Father, that as we as your people declare the word of the Lord, we're going to see breakthrough. So right now, I pray for all those that are not well today. I pray for supernatural healing. In Jesus' name, I declare your word that says, By your stripes, we are healed. I claim it, I believe it, and I receive it. Lord, in Jesus' name, I speak healing over your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing and your power over our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you. Thank you so much for joining us in our service today. And I just want to encourage you that let's keep fighting this good fight of faith. And use the word of God. Declare it. And over your situations and watch and see how God's going to bless you. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Can escape disappointment Can avoid the delay But I don't have to make feeling down and defeated the place that I stay Gonna rise to the moment Gonna speak to the waves Gonna push back that thought that keeps dragging me down When I can't find a way No need to see it To believe it Before you even move on, make a way I was there to believe